Recording is on. Right, so unfortunately, we've just done this, but here again. Um, so we're going to talk about volunteer onboarding with Civi CRM. We've got um, our client with us who supports Record and Karen, who's representing supports Record today. And then you've got um, Corund, who's done the development, and myself from Cert Sector Design, who's done the implementation. Um, and Karen will tell you a little bit more about the um, actual, about Supports Record and what they do and the whole volunteer onboarding journey. Um, great, thank you, Becca. Um, as Becca said, my name is Karen and I am the head of systems of information from a charity called Support Through Court. Um, so if you want to go to the next slide, um, you don't have to read all of this, um, but a bit about our charity. Um, so basically, Support Through Court is a charity that helps people who are going through court who do not have a lawyer. Uh, basically, every year, thousands of people in the UK face court alone. They have to navigate the complex legal system by themselves while going through life-changing events, such as eviction from their home, fighting for custody of their children, or issuing a personal injury claim. So we don't give legal advice, but our volunteers help our clients feel prepared and supported through the process. So we are currently using technology to help update our processes across our organization. Um, our, what we're aiming for basically is to maximize staff efficiency and cost effectiveness so that we can support as many clients as possible. And one of the key processes that we are focusing on is um, our volunteer recruitment and data management. Uh, so now if you want to go two slides, we'll have more about the business case. Okay, so um, support through court, we have 550 volunteers across 20 services. Um, and the recruitment and data management is handled locally at the moment within each service. This results in local service staff having to spend a lot of time doing admin tasks, such as sending out application forms and multiple emails to schedule interviews with possible volunteers. Um, additionally, with volunteers' information being held locally, there's no standardization and information is stored in various ways, ranging from Excel documents to emails to papers and random file drawers. So with each service holding their information locally, it makes it quite difficult for the organization as a whole to communicate with volunteers, as that can only be done through the service manager themselves. So for example, if a service manager was off sick or didn't see the request to send out a communication, their whole volunteer cohort could possibly be missing out on a lot of information from the organization. So by using technology, our two main goals for this were to uh, reduce manual tasks through automation and to have a standard database for our volunteer information. Uh, by doing so, this would allow us to have a standardized process across the organization to ensure our data is managed correctly and safely, uh, reduce admin time so staff could focus more on supporting our volunteers and reaching more clients, and allow our organization to better communicate with volunteers and improve their experience with us. So when deciding on a system, um, CISV was an easy choice for us. Our fundraising team was already using CISV, and there was an overlap between our donors and volunteers. Um, also, having already worked with um, Becca and the team at Third Sector Design on our donor journey previously, we knew they were someone we could trust. So when they said that CISV could do what we needed, we felt confident in moving forward. So while there are a number of parts to the volunteer service management process, the first step of the project was to bring the main volunteer application form onto Civi. And Becca's going to talk to you more about that. Thank you. Um, William, if you could, if you could just move on to like the slide after the next. Um, so as part of the implementation, we sort of try to follow the process by really scoping out what we need to build first and looking at the processes and not just how it's currently done, but also maybe refining and retuning the processes and the business processes with the organization 
because we all know sometimes, you know, like Karen said, if someone's been doing something on paper a certain way for the last five years, it may not be the most effective. Um, so we've got a lovely little um, sort of flow chart um, on how we sort of mapped out first of what we would like the ideal application flow to be. But we also then, as Karen said, it doesn't stop in terms of civi and system side of things when the application comes in. So they will see the consideration of how then a service manager would manage the applications and review all of those once they're in. So we spent, um, Karen and team and I, we spent quite a bit of time and Fazan actually to map out all of the different scenarios um, from what do we need on the public facing element, the pages we need and the different flows to then define how we can structure this data well within Civi CRM. So custom data, where does it need to live? Does it live on an activity, on the contact? Um, and one of the other things that we are actually decided to use in this instance is we are um, running the whole application process through Civi case because we do can easily define set sequences of events and ensure people have the relevant information rather than just the completed activity but different statuses to sort of see those not suitable in the end and so forth. We had initially done um, a little trial just to they get the service managers on board a little bit and attempt well looked at Caldera forms at the time um, but unfortunately it was Caldera um, on the way out um, and looking for something a little bit more CMS independent. We um, decided to go with Form Builder um, and that's the next slide. And I think once we, we had all of the data, um, we've done we've done quite a bit of theming, but we, we wanted an application form that's easy for potential volunteers to use um, that ensures that all the data is held centrally and that all the right data is ready and available. And um, there you've got a little screenshot of the form. Um, I think I think it's fair to say, Karen, that we, we came across a couple and so for one in a minute, that we came across a couple of stumbling blocks um, where form builder maybe wasn't quite where we wanted it to be. Um, so if we now look at some of the form builder development on the slide after next, before I run you through the actual form, um, we had to do a fair bit in terms of um, current did ensure that we prog programmatically open a CV case of the right type with the right subject. And depending on form settings is already um, then assigned to the correct location and service manager in terms of then managing the case through. And then there are things where everyone that's ever worked with form, whether that's the web form or Caldera form, or even those that do it on Google and Microsoft, there are things that we all know we like, uh, maybe being able to put in page breaks or conditionally display field or text, depending on choices made. Um, and validation of required fields was one of the things um, I think we all, we found out that even though you have inform builder the ability to mark a field as required there's actually nothing in the front end making that very obvious um, and I let current chip I know maybe after in the questions um, so you can see at the top there on the screenshot you know, this becomes clear in a minute the there's it's, let's put it this way I think we were or current was a little creative in terms of how some of the custom development works uh, simply because it just wasn't it you know there's no branching or actual pagination as such so it's it's certainly um it had some work and it's been a, a bit of a back and forth in terms of getting it to where we are but um if you go to the yeah, this is the problem. If we go to the actual run through of the form, we'll run you through the form. And I'm hoping, I mean, I have all of these open. Um, and this is on a um, development site. There won't be any data shared. Um, 
I unfortunately had lots of things ready, but William, if you don't mind clicking on that and if you can continue sharing, that would be really great. Can anyone, can everyone see that all right? Just brilliant. Um, yeah, that's good. Um, brilliant. So the first one, like we sort of said, this is um, this is a limited choice at the moment. You can see the field is required. You have to decide on the location where you would like to volunteer. And if you pick, for my benefit and because I always test and I'm in Exeter, if we pick Exeter, um, that also then ensures that the custom work current has done in terms of opening a case is assigned to the correct location. Um, William, if you don't mind, this is a, this is standard um, form builder functionality. As you can see, we've we've done some bit around the theming and making sure we apply, um, you know, supports records, standard headers, field labels as we use throughout, because some of those just didn't filter through from standard civi. Um, the validation sits on the fields we defined. And you may just have to put in a contact phone, I think, these won't. Brilliant. So here you have, again, a couple of, um, if we, if you could scroll up ever so slightly for me, William. As you can see, we have, you can... Um, sorry, Corinne just messaged me. I was just, was just looking at it. So you can see at the top, and Corinne will tell you about the pagination in a minute. But for example, you've got, um, I think the first one is, again, mandatory, William. The other ones are, aren't. But it'd be nice, just click us through. And we get to some of the ones that it doesn't need anything. Um, and all of these are, at the moment, they're still standard um, custom data and pre and or post help text, depending on what it is. Um, and here now we, we have, so if you, for example, click yes, you have health problems, that's where Corinne does the work on making sure, depending on your answers, the form cascades and shows you where we would ask for more information And the same with some of the other ones. Um, yes, no, depending on the choices you make, the form will expand or not do anything. Again, here we, we've done, um, it's slightly split. You can either upload a CV or provide details. If you don't provide the details, it won't, it will give you the information that you know you you have to do one or the other. You can't just skip the step completely, um, even though it says you know all three are mandatory. It does does do the verification. Um, so you need to have do both. Um, feel free to just put testing in all of these. These are. Um, as it's a volunteering role, um, and a lot of um, screening goes into this at this stage by the service manager, the, you know, it's sort of about the experience, all of those items, um, they're all mandatory, I'm afraid. Um, languages and skills, um, we, we limited it. Um, we looked at options, and rather than it being a free text, we thought we'd give people the option just to allow the service managers to actually easily filter it and have less randomness possibly. Um, but also, I think we looked into how many languages there are. So we went with the 10 most common ones according to Google <laughs> to limit the lists of thousands ever so slightly. But there is an other option. Again, if you select other, it does it does ask you what the other language is. Um, and I think that's all on that. None of this is. 
Um, and this is um, then about references required. Just yeah, anything would be great. You do need a name. Um, and then that's the last step. I, if we if we couldn't, um, only because this is our dev site, if we couldn't submit it, that'd be great. Um, but that's the final step. The, there's a couple of things where um, we are still looking if we could potentially provide a preview at this point before submitting an appliance, but that's the sort of that's one of the bigger hurdles we have at the moment. And if you were to hit submit and apply, the Exeter Service Manager will get a notification that they've received a volunteer application. And that's the bit we're working on and finalizing at the moment in terms of the form builder slash search kit display to easily display anything, you know, Williams just put in his application to look through and, you know, then process through civic case and either tell them a yay or nay. And um, I think, that's probably all there is in terms of information development, but I will let Corrunt expand if he would like to on any of the development. I think you have covered it quite well. Uh, so in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, development, meant uh, we uh, we tried not to modify any of the CVCRM itself and the most of the stuff was done with using an extension which was solely used for volunteer application purpose and so which kind of uh, and we tried to follow follow most of the good practices not to modify core and do it in a way and hopefully uh, some of the stuff like pagination and maybe condition logic we are looking how we can contribute back to the core team and maybe it will add it to the roadmap of the form builder itself and happy to take any questions regarding this either now or later also um, anything i think there is one on the um, on the shared Google sheet in terms of for the expanding conditional questions, what is broadly the tech solution you use to get the behavior? Okay, so uh, the way it's done currently, it's uh, very specific to the fields. So if A, if, if the option A and B, if B option selected, just hide C, it's done per page basis. It's done in a dynamic manner, but it just depends on the fields. So you cannot configure it via UI, but it's in the code. Great, thank you. Um, were there any other questions from anyone? It looks like people are just about to type, but maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Um, the there's a, a question is is it on the same site as the civi instance or embedded in supports records main site um, it is on the civi crm site which is um, the wordpress site Yeah, I'll take the is the is the extension code uh, available publicly? Not yet, uh, but there's no the no reason why it should not be. It's just that uh, it we just extended using normal module uh, of Angular, and it's it's very tight uh, tightly uh, I would say integrated with the current form. So so we didn't 
they all think that it would be uh, quite generic so that anyone can plug and play. So that's the only reason why it's not put in the public domain. What's the size of JSCS in terms of page load? So that's basically, uh, we didn't add any extra JSCSS or so whatever, at, at the most we, we might, might have added maybe around 100 lines of uh, JS files. So all the stuff which gets loaded is uh, loaded from CVCRM itself. So it's just standard CV. We are not using any external libraries per se. Um, I'll, I think I can probably take the next ones in terms of what information is sent to a person's CV record. Uh, it will, it will, if the contact already exists, it does the usual duplicate matching and just opens, um, or creates a case and associates that with, I guess the, the volunteer applicant as in CV case language to the client. Um, And it, it creates all of the, um, so it creates a volunteer application, um, application activity that's associated with the contact. And in terms of what is actually sent, um, sent out. So there is, um, there's scheduled reminders in place to thank the applicant for the application. And, you know, what will happen with the application and that someone will be in touch. Uh, and it will also create the actual CV case, I said, associated with the right location or the selected location and the relevant service manager will be notified and could pick it up from there and then manage through. Does that, hopefully that answers that. Okay, are there any more questions from anyone? Oh, I think there's another question there. Is everything stored as fields in contacts or are there any references to other new or existing records? Um, a bit of both. So it's a mixture yeah. on the application of bringing in contact fields um, or address. So for example, the skills in languages are associated with the contact, their custom field. Um, sets associated with the contact type individual, whereas some of the other items we've seen, for example, the, you know, a brief summary of your why you would like to volunteer for support through court is associated with the, with the activity rather than the contact because that may change over time. So it's a mixture of both. But yeah, if it's, if it's an existing contact, it will update um, the contact record. If it's a brand new contact, it'll just create a brand new record. I wasn't sure how to ask this question, but what type of securities are tied to this? So you you mentioned that there's crossover between the donor database and the volunteers and some other same people. What do if I am on the donor side, what do I see of the volunteer side? How is that separated? Is there separate permissions for me to see the volunteer side of information? Or can I see both uh, that they are a volunteer and how many hours they've done? Like, what's that combination look like? Or how do you separate that combination? Do you do you mean in terms of being a a service manager at support through court? Um, I guess uh, working in another organization in another different database, it was like I could see that they were a donor, and if I got permission, I could also see that they were a volunteer and how many hours they put in. But if they didn't want me to see that they're a volunteer, they could lock me out and I could only see that they were a donor. I had no idea they were a volunteer. So there was like, some, like it was almost like a separate module and they had to give me permission to cross to see that crossover information. Yeah, we we um we were just looking at some of this because as Karen um, mentioned, a lot of the service managers sort of sit across the board a little bit anyway, um, and mm. how supports record runs it. So for example, um Exeter will have his own um sort of contribution page in place and they can see some of that information but we are rather than just limiting and creating brand new permissions or 
doing anything too crazy. We've, we're just going down the route of the sort of the layout editors. And it's almost like it, it's not that I can't, or let's take the communications team. It's not necessarily that they can't see my volunteer application information or some details, but it's not relevant to them. So we're just hide, we're just working on fine tuning the contact screens and hiding elements for people that aren't necessary. Okay, thank you. There's another question about duplicate records and whether it, one will be created if someone shortens their name. Uh, <laughs> if, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I guess um, we we are using standard duplicate matching rules so the like i think current has just put something and then in terms of we will be enforcing enforcing logging for the volunteering so we are we've got the application process but be, like we said it's not the end all so we are just looking at the best option to then allow once someone submitted their application how can they maybe track progress on it and we've done quite a bit of similar work in terms for PCP pages for supports for court and we ultimately would like them to go to to create a user account first so the WordPress user account and then do something on the Civi dashboard um, whether it's search kit however we do it to bring in some information so we are going to go down the route of create your profile first you know you need to log in before you do anything and we're just looking at the profiles but it'll be standard duplicate matching in terms of um, first, possibly first name, last name, maybe taking in the th first three, four characters. But th I think the defi deciding factor will be email. Yeah, and the next question about the spam, I think it just got answered itself, so. Yes. Yeah. That's the sort of question we like. <laughs> what <laughs> the... <laughs> <laughs> the spam yes um so for example yeah there it there are um it's not sorry getting slightly lowered at my end um it, yeah so it because the but even on our standard profile create options we use the um we use google recapture so that bit will be covered as well Okay, is that all of the questions then? Okay, well, thank you very much to Becca and Karen and Curran for um, giving a demonstration. So I'm gonna turn the recording off now and then we can go to the more informal part of the meeting.